Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Maya tutorial. And today we're going to be looking at how to create a camera aim and a depth of field constraint attached to it. Um, a lot of people do this a bunch of different ways. I'm going to show you one specific way that I like to do it uh, with the camera aim. So I've just got a fresh scene here. And uh, once we actually create this, we'll only ever have to have it done this one time. And then we can just reference this camera for the rest of the time. So once we create it, you never have to do it again. So we're going to go to create camera and we're going to do camera and aim and select that and once that's in the scene um, we're going to also need to drop in a uh, measure tool so i'm going to switch to my side view and i'm going to go to create measure tool and distance tool and to do this i'm going to hold down the x key and this is going to snap it to the grid so it's going to snap to the world center to begin with and the camera's uh, sensor plate or its virtual sensor um, plane uh, is on the world center so i'm going to hold down x click and drag it there it's going to uh, drop in the first locator there and then i'm going to hold down x again and click and drag here a little bit and it's going to put it over there for the second locator and you'll see that it has got this numerical value here which is the amount of units uh, of distance it is away from uh, these two locators that are away from each other and hey make sure you're subscribed with notifications on otherwise you may be missing out on the many tutorials that we're releasing for free each week here on youtube and once your two nodes are in the scene like so the second one we actually want to make sure that this is snapped to the aim constraint so we're going to select it go to the move tool and we're going to hold down the v key and we're just going to move that along there and it's going to snap automatically while you're holding the v v for vector and it will hold, snap to that camera aim constraint right there then we want to make sure we parent those all together so that is going to be done by making sure we're under rigging here select the camera and then we're just going to control select the first locator and that's the one at the center of the world we're going to go to constrain and make sure that our parent constraints are reset and then we're just going to click add then we're going to select the uh, aim locator and we can select the control select the locator too and then we are going to click constrain and parent and that will do that as well then these two here we can hide because we don't need to see them because now we're going to use this to move the aim and you can see that that changes the numerical value of the distance draw now so if we can just move that to wherever we would like now we want to make sure that this number here this number four is being fed into the depth of field focal distance which is currently five so obviously there's a disparity there so we want to go into the node editor which we're going to go to window node editor and i'm going to clear the scene here i'm going to select the camera in the outliner click this icon here which has got the little plus button and then this camera one here we do not want this we want camera shape that's the shape node and then we're going to select the distance dimension from the outliner click the plus button in there and again we don't need this one so we're just going to take that out with the little minus button we're going to expand both of those out by selecting them and hitting the three key on the keyboard uh, not the numerical three the other one and we're going to draw the distance from the dimension shape to the focus distance so just from that to that there and now you'll see that four there and four there so as we move the aim constraint that now affects the focus distance so this is excellent we have got this set up so what we're going to do now is everything in here i'm happy with so i'm going to hit Control shift s and i'm going to call this camera dof and i'm going to save it um, you can do it as a, bin a binary or an ascii i think binary is fine and then when i create a new scene what i can do is every time i create a new scene and i want that camera i can go to file and go to reference editor and i can locate that file that scene file that i just created so we'll create scene and we'll click camera dof and reference and you'll see it brings in all of those objects there that we had previously so we've got the camera we can move it around and we can also go to perspective and view through it i'm going to split the uh, viewport so i've got the perspective on the left um, actually i'm going to put the uh, depth of field camera on the left and the perspective on the right and i'll quickly set up some objects so we can see how this works okay so i've got a, a bunch of pillars in the scene there and i'm just going to make sure that i've got my camera dof aim selected and 
remember that this is an aim constraint so the camera will always look at it so it's kind of a little bit more natural to what an actual camera would work like because cameras always focus in a linear direction so I'm going to show you on the left hand side here that the camera is going to focus between the two or four objects as you can see there uh, Maya does a okay job of displaying this I'm going to increase the depth of field to something like 1.8 uh, an f-stop of 1.8 so we get a little bit more contrast okay and you'll see that the focus is occurring on the nearest um, pillar there and if I drag this back you'll see that that is now focusing in the distance and just in case you did want your depth of field to be independent from your camera's aim constraint what we can do here is just repeat the process so we're just going to go create a camera we've got a new camera in the same same thing we'll go to the side view and we're going to create now just a measure tool a distance tool and I'm going to hold down X and click the first point and then hold down X click the second point we still get the distance and it just happens to be 5.6 again and we're also going to make the camera the parent of the first locator so constrain parent and if we select this second node here you'll notice that the distance is always uh, being attributed between these two points and the first locator we can hide because we do not need to select it because even when we move the camera that distance will always change we can just change the second locator to be called DOF so we know that that is the DOF and we can also if you're having trouble seeing it in the scene you can select it under the attribute editor you can go to DOF and you can go to uh, drawing overrides enable overrides and we can change the color of it to be a different color before it's selected so you can make it pink and it's very easy to see so and then it'll just be the a matter of uh, going back into the Windows node editor and we'll clean up the scene and then we will select the camera first pop that in there and we'll remove the one that we don't want and then we're just going to select the distance dimension shape put that in there and again we'll just minus the one out that we don't want expand them both out with three and distance will go into focus distance and now those are bound together so now whatever this number is it's currently uh, 12.3 this should be 12.33 there you go 12.335 it's rounding up to 12.336 which is, should be meaningless in terms of scale so again you can just save your reference out now the only problem with having the focal distance locator disconnected from the aim constraint uh, so to have it free uh, moving is that if you are not moving it um, relative so perpendicular to the camera where it's pointing so for example when I'm doing this it's fine you can see it switched between the focus of everything along this um, plane here but if I focus on this front pillar and then move this to the left because the number on the camera uh, on the distance is increasing so 21.7 um, it is actually changing the focal distance to be a lot higher than what it should be it should actually be 5.4 so if you are using this method and you're pointing the camera around and you're like okay this is where I want to be and I want to focus on this back pillar here you need to ensure that you get your aim uh, your depth of field node to be relatively perpendicular to the camera if you're looking at narrow depths of field so very sort of um macro photography emulation that sort of thing an aim constraint might be better for uh, sorry a look constraint a camera and look constraint might be better for accuracy uh, but this this method works nine times out of ten and you can sort of eyeball it um, in terms of getting it lined up because you've got a little bit of play with depth of field and, and the amount of area that's in focus then usually this is fine that's it for this tutorial if you found it useful make sure you leave a like so other people can find it and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out cg and illustration tutorials every week just like this one become a patron and access tutorial assets bonus content a private discord and more by clicking the link below